Hi everyone, Alex here. If you've seen the news at all recently, you've probably heard of ChatGPT or OpenAI. It's all the buzz right now in the tech world, and I'm super excited in this video to show you some tips, tricks, and examples on how you can use ChatGPT to improve your Excel workflows. Let's check it out. So the first thing you want to do to actually use ChatGPT is create an OpenAI account. OpenAI is the company that created ChatGPT, and at this time it is completely free to use and free to create an account. But I do want to note that they have mentioned in some statements and some Discord messages that they are exploring paid options and paid tiers. But at the time of this video, if you go to OpenAI.com, you'll see right at the top here they have introducing ChatGPT. You can go ahead and click on Try. It'll check your browser just for security, and then you'll get the message, welcome to ChatGPT. So all you have to do here is uh, sign up with an account. Occasionally you will get a message here that the, the website is overloaded, there's too much usage. Uh, just wait a few minutes generally, uh, refresh, and it'll come back. So let's start off with a really simple example for ChatGPT, which is finding the average of data in a specific column. In this case, from cell B2 to B10. So here we just have some example sales data. Let's say these are different salespeople, and these are their monthly sales records from January, February to March. Let's copy this prompt, and I'll go over to ChatGPT, where I can paste it in and hit enter. Now immediately we'll see that ChatGPT sort of enunciates what it's thinking and what you can use for the strategy that it's gonna suggest. So in this case, it says you can use the average function. Um, it says this is what the syntax is. It's a very simple one, just average of range. And range in this case is the range of cells that you wanna find the average of. So since we specified from B2 to B10, it actually provides that input. So it's very important to be very specific when you're asking questions to chat GPT because it'll actually give you output based on the input that you gave in the question. Copying that over, and pasting it, I'm just gonna match the destination formatting. But we can see that it actually worked perfectly. It has the average from B2 to B10. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the bottom right autofill function here to drag it across to the other columns, and it looks like everything has worked great. Now let's try something with a little bit of logic built into it. So let's say I have an example of students and their math grades, and I wanna really quickly just do a simple check that says if they're above 50%, they pass, it'll return a value of pass, and if they're below 50%, it should mark fail. So I wrote this super quick prompt uh, in Excel, write a function to return pass if a value in B2 is greater than 0 0.5 and fail otherwise. So let's go over to ChatGPT, copy in the prompt and hit enter. Right off the bat here, no beating around the bush, ChatGPT immediately gives you the right result. So in cell B2, if it's greater than 0.5, uh, pass. But we see it, it immediately did the right thing. So it said if B2 is greater than 0.5, return pass, otherwise fail. And there, Excel just auto-copied it, auto-filled it down all the way. And we can see that the logic works. 32% is a fail, 49% is a fail, 98% is a pass. So handles logic like this extremely easily. Now let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's say I have a really simple spreadsheet which has a list of products in the A column, suppliers in the B column, and the corresponding quantity that they've supplied in the C column. So I wanna figure out what's the total quantity of a specific product given by a specific supplier. I can write a prompt that explains what I actually wanna do and feed it to chat GPT, because maybe I'm not sure which formula I wanna use, which function, what the right logic is or conditions. So let's write a prompt and see how chat GPT handles it. In Excel, calculate the total quantity of items in column C, so the quantity column, that exactly match the cell G1 in column A. So G1 is what we're specifying in the products column A. And then we're also specifying G2, the supplier, in column B. So we just basically listed out in plain English what we want to do. If we copy that over and we go to ChatGPT and we paste it in and hit enter, let's see what ChatGPT recommends. All right, so after a little bit of thinking, it says to calculate the total quantity of items in column C that exactly match the cell G1, you can use the sum ifs function. And the formula would be as follows. So it immediately spit out a formula. Let's copy that, but let's also see what it says for an explanation first. So it says the sum ifs function adds up the values in a range, in this case, column C, which was our quantity column, if you remember, if it meets multiple criteria. This is perfect, this is exactly what we wanted to do. So the first argument is the range of cells that you wanna add up, okay, got that. That, column C. The second argument is the range of cells you want to check against the first criterion, G1. The third argument is the criterion that you want to use for the first range, G1 itself. Okay. The fourth argument, B, is the range of cells that you want to check against the second criterion, G2. So this looks promising. This looks good. Let's uh, let's try it out back in Excel. So I'm going to go over back to my result. I'm going to paste it in, match the destination formatting so we can see it, and it gave 390. Does that look correct? Okay, let's see. Tomatoes Alex 200, Tomatoes Alex 190, it didn't include the mushrooms for Alex. That looks good. 200 plus 190 is 390. Awesome. So it correctly gave us the sum is function, which is the right tool for this job.
Next up, let's talk about text extraction. Text extraction can be really challenging for humans just because it's not always clear, uh, you know, whether you have to use a left function or a right function or a mid function, splitting them. If you've ever used regular expressions in the past, it can be a real beast. So this is something that's really simple to do in Excel. Let's say you've got a list of email names and you'd like to extract uh, the names first, uh, essentially everything before the at character. We can easily write a prompt for that uh, for ChatGPT, which says in Excel, extract the name before the at character in an email in cell A2 and let's see what it says. So copying this over into ChatGPT, we can see it immediately spits out a formula. And it even explains it that it says the formula is the left function to basically extract the characters before the at, which is perfect because that's what we want. So if I copy that, I go back to Excel, I paste it in here, uh, and I drag the autocomplete down. We can see it grabbed everything perfectly uh, to the left of the at sign. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but what if we want to do something a little bit more complex, like extract the middle portion of the string here, uh, i.e. the company name? That's a little bit more complicated than just looking to the left of the at symbol because there's periods here. Some of them have different domains. Some of them have periods uh, in their names themselves at the beginning of the email. So can ChatGPT handle that? Well, let's give it a try. So here we have the prompt that says extract the company name between the at character and the domain at the end of an email address. So I think this prompt is really cool because it shows that ChatGPT uh, has to have some context about, you know, what is an email address? What does the domain mean? You know, I haven't fed it any of that information. So let's go ahead, copy that second prompt there and hit enter. So here, Instead of using left and find, it says use mid and find functions to extract the company name between the at character. Okay, so this looks uh, certainly a bit more complex. That would probably take me a while to write myself. So it's explaining this formula looks for the position of the at character using the find function. Okay, stores that in a variable. And then it looks for the position of the first dot after the at character. That's really important because if it didn't look for the first dot, it could potentially grab the dot in the names if you remember. So let's copy it over and see how it handles it. Okay, so it looks like the first one, company A, did pretty well, but how's it going to do for all of the other ones if I autofill it and drag it down? So wow, it worked perfectly. Um, and this, this is, again, is particularly cool because there are periods in the names of some of these companies here, and it's still smart enough to come up with a formula that handles all of that just by specifying that I wanted it between the at character and the domain. So very cool, very powerful, saves a ton of time when you're doing text extraction. So this next example, I think, is a perfect application for ChatGPT, and that is doing a 2D lookup in a big array of data. So in this particular case, I have a list of salespeople. Uh, let's say these are their last names, and then the sales targets that they've hit each month from January, February, and March. So I might be interested in seeing what a specific salesperson, like Kyle, what numbers they did in the month of March, for example. Well, if you remember my previous video, you'll probably remember that you can do these kind of lookups with VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP or uh, the beautiful index match combination, but it does take a bit of time to set up those formulas and kind of get your head around it. So if we could leverage ChatGPT to just kind of in plain English write down what we want to do, this could save us a ton of time. So here's a prompt I came up with. Uh, it says in Excel, write a formula to grab a value in table A1 to D10. That's just our table here with uh, the names in column A and the months as headers, and then where name is in G2. So that's kind of our input, our specified name. And then the month input that we have is in G3 basically just describing what we want to do. So I'm really curious to see what ChatGPT will come up with that um, since we didn't specify you know, how it should do it. Will it use VLOOKUP, will it use XLOOKUP, or index match? Let's, let's take a look. All right, so it looks like it's decided to go with VLOOKUP uh, with an interesting combination of match as well to kind of get the 2D effect in there. That's interesting, but it's not exactly what I wanted it to do, but let's you know still check and kind of see if it gives us the right data. I'm gonna paste that formula in there. So it gave us 10,092. Does that look right, uh, Kyle, in March? 10,092, it does. Okay, so it did the right thing, but um, I don't wanna use VLOOKUP for a number of reasons uh, right now. Uh, the performance isn't great in super big spreadsheets. Uh, it doesn't return a dynamic result like index match does. So I'd really love if they could do index match. So let's see. I'm just gonna respond and say, use index and match instead and see what it does. Awesome, so it's rewriting the formula right now to just use index and match, which is a lot faster from a performance point of view. So let's try that out. I'll copy it over. I'm gonna delete this one and then I'm gonna paste the new one in. Perfect, it's got the same result, which is great. Let's try changing the month just to test it out. January 11,841, perfect. Let's change the name to Colby. Colby did 4,000 uh, in January, awesome. So this works really well 
and look at how complicated the formula is. I didn't have to think at all about what needs to be nested where, where does the match need to go? It did it all for me. So very cool, very powerful. All right, now let's try something really fancy and that's using ChatGPT to create macros for you in Excel. Here, let's say that I've got a, a table of sales data and I'd like that to get sent out to the email addresses in this column A. Well, I created a quick prompt here which says, in Excel, write a macro to print the table from B1 to E10 as a P to a PDF and then attach that PDF to an email sent to the email addresses in column A. Bit of a mouthful, but let's see what it can do there. But before I do that, I just wanna make sure there's two things you have to do before you can run macros in your Excel. The first is to right click, uh, customize the ribbon and make sure that the developer tab is checked. That will give you the developer tab here at the top. And then uh, at the top, you also need to make sure it's the workbook is saved as an XLSM, which is a macro enabled XLS. Do those two things and then let's move over to ChatGPT. In ChatGPT, here I have copied in the prompt and uh, I've just waited a little bit and ChatGPT has said, here's an example of an Excel macro that will print a table from cell B1 to E10 to PDF and attach it to an email. Wow, okay, that's pretty impressive. I'm gonna copy that. It says, note this code assumes that the email addresses are in column A starting in row one. Also, it will only send the email to the first email address. Okay, that's a known limitation then I guess, that's okay. If you wanna send it to multiple email addresses, you'll have to use a loop, okay? But still, this looks like an awesome start. So let's, uh, let's copy that, let's go back to Excel. All right, so now let's, add our macro. So all you have to do here is click on the Visual Basic tab here, uh, insert a module. I'm just gonna directly copy in uh, everything ChatGPT gave me, it didn't edit it at all. I'm gonna save it uh, and then I'm gonna close this. Now I can click on the Macros tab here. Uh, there's my macro. I'm gonna run it. Okay, so it ran and it looks like um, it worked. There were no errors that popped up. Uh, so if I go over to my Outlook, I can see it actually did send an email to the first email in that list. And it's, it was even smart enough to add um, a please find attach the table you requested, which is pretty cool. Um, so here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and preview the file right in Outlook and okay. So it, it had a little bit of a limitation here where it didn't uh, copy over the exact table that I wanted, but that's probably a pretty easy fix. Um, but wow, right off the bat, the first prompt I gave it, it was able to move all of the stuff in there into a, a PDF. It was able to attach it to an email, send it to the right address, very impressive. So even though ChatGPT didn't get it perfect with this first attempt, it would be super easy for me to do a little bit of debugging. I probably just need to change this active seat selection to make sure that the right range is set in there. Then I could probably ask it to add a loop, but wow, in literally one minute, I was able to create a pretty complex PDF to automate uh, potentially a really painful workflow in my day to day. So incredibly powerful, just a taste of what you can do. Anything that you're doing in Excel that is painstaking and painful, please think about how you could leverage ChatGPT to do this. Um, it's great at creating macros. It's great at simplifying some of the tedious work, but you have to be very careful. You know, it has to be combed over with a human eye and a human brain because it doesn't always get things right on the first try, as you can see. Well, there we have it. Chat GPT in Excel. While it's not perfect and it does require a little bit of handholding, I do believe that it can help you get from point A to point B in a much more productive manner. So I hope you learned something from these tips, tricks, and examples. And if you did, please consider subscribing. As always, I'll see you in the next one.